All right, so we are here to start in 2.2. Um, so 2.2 is going to be over coordinate systems and starting to learn how to graph lines. Okay, and there are a bunch of little different topics. Okay, so it does get a little bit long winded. So let me go ahead and get started on it. So in 2.2, we are talking about the coordinate system. Okay, which you hopefully remember. Okay, we have axis. You have an X and a Y axis, right? This would be my X axis. This is my Y axis. Okay, we have quadrants. Okay, quadrant one is always an ordered pair that's positive, positive, like uh, two comma one. X, two, up one. So you get the point two comma one. Okay. Then we have quadrant two, which is always going to be a negative value and then a positive value. So if we talk about here, this would be negative four, positive two. Quadrant three is always a negative X and a negative Y. So if I look here, here is negative one, negative three. And then quadrant four, which is always a positive and then a negative value. So we can have three comma negative two. All right, so those are your quadrants. Goes counterclockwise, and the origin is always at zero, zero. That's my origin, zero, zero. All right, so knowing those is gonna help us be able to graph. And all mean, by all means, you can use a calculator. Most of you are telling me you have a graphing calculator, which is great. Okay, the more of you that have the graphing calculator, the easy it is for me, believe it or not, because I can teach you a few things. Okay, so um, if you have a different calculator, uh, some of the stuff in the textbook actually shows you how to use certain calculators. That's the older TIs, the 82s, 83s, 84s. If you have anything past that, you may have to Google it. All right, so graphing a line. Now remember, a line, if I take any two points, I can draw a line through it. Okay, so to graph uh, lines, if I can find two points, I can draw my line. Okay, so one of the ideas is by picking points. Well, it's not too bad. Okay, what we do is we find our x, y values, and we're going to pick numbers for either x or y. Let's just pick a number for x. Say we put a zero in. We put a zero in for x, and we solve for y. Well, that's going to cancel my 4y is equal to 8, or y is 2. So I have the point zero two, zero two. Okay, then I can put four in. Three times four plus four y is equal eight. That's twelve. Subtract the twelve. Okay, four. So y is one. So I have the point four one. Now, between those two points, I can actually draw this line. And there's my line. Okay, the only problem with this method is what if I use one as one of my points? So it'd be three times negative one, plug in negative one, and we solve for y. Well, so far it's been good, but this is gonna be negative three plus four y is equal to eight, 4y is going to equal, add 3 to both sides, it's 11. y is 11 over 4, which is 2 and 1 fourth, which is actually, it's on the, the line, but it's hard to graph. Okay, so this method, it works, but if you can at least find two points that are whole numbers to graph, that's what you want to do. All right. All right, so there are some, whoops, I'm going backwards here. Let me do this. Sorry, wrong order. All right, so graphing lines using intercepts. Now, this is a much better method if you have certain type of problems, okay? So how do I deal with graphing intercepts? Well, x-intercept is a point that's always some number comma zero. A y-intercept is zero comma a number. So if I give you the equation, 3x minus 2y is equal to 12. It's kind of like picking points. 
what we're going to do is one time we're going to put zero in for x and one time we're going to put zero in for y. So zero in for x would be three times zero minus two y is equal to 12. So that's going to be negative two y is equal to 12 where y is negative six. So I get the point zero, negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now put zero in for y. 3x minus 2 times 0 is equal to 12. Well, that's now gone. Now I have 3x is equal to 12, or x is equal to 4. So I get 4, 0. Okay, so at 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can take my line, measure it up, and draw our line between the two, and I have my line. Okay, now this method does really well if the two numbers in front of the x and the y both go into the constant. If, since 3 goes into 12 evenly and 2 goes into 12 evenly, that's a great method on graphing lines, even without a calculator. Okay, but I also understand graphing calculators are great. If you can find yourself a graphing calculator, even just a loaner for a couple months for somebody who might have one from the past, tell them, you'll give them a few dollars just to use it until May. Okay. Um, if you do graphing calculators, most of them you have to get y is equal to mx plus b form, which we'll talk about later on how to deal with it. All right, so there are two special types of lines. One is horizontal, one is vertical. Horizontal, vertical. Okay, so when we talk about these type of lines, okay, you're going to have a horizontal line is always y is equal to some number. Vertical lines are x is equal to some number. The only form they come in. Okay? So when we talk about a graph, okay, if I give you a point here at 0, 4, a horizontal line that goes through that is going to have the equation y is equal to whatever number goes to the x-axis, 4. Okay, if I have a vertical line, let's say goes through two here, here's my vertical line, it's gonna be x is equal to wherever it crosses the x-axis, two. And that's all you have to write. Okay, that's how simple x and y intersect, or, or horizontal lines and vertical lines are. Okay, so if I ask for you know, if I give you the equation y is equal to 8, that's a horizontal line through 0, 8. If I give you x is equal to 8, that's going to be a vertical line through 8, 0. Okay. So, different ways that you can represent that. All right, so there are some applications, uh, word problems that I do expect you to kind of go through. It's in the textbook or your e-text. It's example five in this section, 2.2. And there's a, there's a good, I think at least one good video that will help you through. Very basic, plugging in a value and then getting an answer. Plug in an X to get the Y, vice versa. All right, so the, there are two formulas in this section you have to know how to do. One is the distance formula, okay? If I give you two points, A and B, we can find its distance, okay? Now, each point has an X, Y, X, Y to it. We level one of them ones and one of them twos, okay? The formula itself, okay? The formula itself, you do not have to memorize, okay? That is not a necessity. We're not going to make you do that. Okay? But you have to know how to use it. I will give it to you somehow. It's on the final, it's on formula charts and stuff like that. So notice the distance is equal to the square root of x squared minus x or x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. And sometimes you'll see it vice versa. Y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. Doesn't matter which order you do them in. 
So if we want to find the distance from P to Q, here's point P, here's point Q. And we want to find that distance. So what we're going to do is distance is equal to the square root of, we're going to make this x1, y1, x2, y2. Take the x's, negative 7 minus a negative 1, all squared, plus 8 minus a negative 2, all squared. So you have to know a few things. These two, that's going to be negative 6. This is going to be 10. So we're going to get the square root of negative 6 squared plus 10 squared which is going to be 36 plus 10, 100, which is the square root of 136. So we got to go factor tree. A 2 goes into it 68 times. No. Yeah, 68 times. 2 goes into it 34 times. 2 and 17, so I have a pair of 2s. So my final answer is 2 root 34. And that is its distance. It can be a whole number, it can be a radical as long as it's not negative because distance can't be negative and you cannot have A and I in it. Okay? Now, if I decide to use those same two points, we can also find the midpoint. So the midpoint is going to be directly in the middle of A and B, in which this distance is the same as this distance. So this is my midpoint. Short little formula for it. Again, you don't have to memorize it, but it's add up the x values, divide by 2. Add up the y values, divide by 2. So if I'm trying to find the midpoint of PQ, remember PQ up here? I already have them labeled, so I'm going to take the two x values, and it doesn't matter what order you take them into. Negative 1 plus negative 7, divide by 2. The y values, negative 2 plus 8. 5 by 2. I'm going to get negative 8 over 2. And the other point is going to be 6 over 2. Sorry. Which reduced is negative 4, comma 3. So the midpoint between these two points is at negative 4, 3. And just FYI, that would be in the second quadrant. Okay. So just as an FYI, as a little extra practice. All right, I hope this helps. Okay, you might find it a little bit different on the printed out notes because I did those earlier and then I lost the video. So I just redid the video. So again, we hope this helps. Good luck. You ought to be able to do 2.1 and 2.2 now. All right, again, good luck.